been fascinated by the people who play games mm -hmm. and get addicted to them. Mm -hmm. So people, and not just youngsters, get addicted to playing the games for hours and hours sure. in a day, and, and their whole life is involved in the oh, game. There are some uh, mobile games that you play on your smartphone or some video games that are specifically designed to trigger this like serotonin and dopamine reward when you when you get something. Uh, so, like the cooking people know that salt and uh, sweet yeah. will addict you. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of, of those games. There was a collectible card game in the 90s that I really loved called Magic the Gathering. And the idea was we're two wizards and we're using the power of the land to cast spells and have a battle. And we're playing cards out of a deck of cards, and the cards are our creatures and our spells. It was really fun, but the money-making aspect of this game for the publisher was you could go and buy more cards to add to your deck. And what eventually happened is that the players who had the most money got the best right. decks, I, I would seem right? to be the next. Yeah, so we called that the chase. And it was like chasing the dragon, right? Uh -huh. and, and I didn't like it, and I ended up just bailing out of the game after a while. I've been playing games like Dungeons and Dragons since I was a little kid. Right. And, and there is something about sitting together with my friends once a week or every other week. With them in the living room. Yeah, and like and, going and, through the And you're the playing world. it on the television set? And, no, no, we're playing on the table and in our imaginations, oh, oh. right? Are you rolling dice? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. See. So that's the way that I started in the, in the 80s. Yeah. And then uh, when I was in college in the 90s, friends would come over and we would play head-to-head -head sports games on the Sega Genesis. So we would play hockey games or golf or baseball or whatever. But you're still face-to-face. -face. But we're still face-to-face. -face. I never would have thought it was possible to make meaningful friendships and deep, important relationships if you couldn't look at a person that you were playing with them. And you really can. I have some friends who they have treadmills in their house and they have laptops at their treadmills. And every day while they're walking on their treadmills, they play Warcraft together. And I have a friend who got from her now husband, but then fiance, and in like a really rare item in Warcraft as, as a gift. As a dowry. Of, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. That's hysterical. I figure if we can look down and see things in a microscopic level relative to our perception, we've got to be at the microscopic level of something bigger than us. So I just read this story in Popular Science about these scientists who are figuring out that like most living organisms take a, some sort of carbohydrate and convert that into some sort of electrical energy and that's how we like understand life. So a lot of, when we're looking for things on, on Mars, right, they're looking for like, well, something's gonna be around water because you need water to like activate these things and we're looking for proteins and things like that. This guy found these single cell. Which guy? Hey, this, I, guy this guy on I, Earth I, found yeah, this guy a Earth, single and I, cell. And I, and I just I can't remember his name. Okay, but I thought you he found it on Mars. He found single it on cell, Earth. So he found these little these little microbes. Yeah. That are taking electricity and directly turning electricity into energy. They don't need the carbohydrates. Where do they get the electricity? And from? well, this is getting it off of an electrode. But uh, well, the it's electrode like, is, it's, is, it's, is that it's a power a, source? Yeah, because it's, it's, it's in a lab. Oh, right? I see. But in this article in Popular Science, they, these people said that these, these scientists think this fundamentally changes the way that we could define life, right? So we know that there are things that live really, really deep in the ocean that are around these like volcanic heat vents and, and they can only exist under those conditions. And we know that there are these things that live in these extreme conditions, right? right. We've, just, we've discovered that there are these huge oceans underneath the surface of some of the moons in the outer solar system. I and because, yeah, uh, uh, Europa and uh, um, uh, there's, there's like liquid methane oceans yeah. on Titan, right? Yeah. So, so these guys were like, we could have massive bacteria colonies all over the place. Of stuff we don't recognize. And we just don't recognize it.